All right, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel here. I know that there's a million videos on muffler mods, timing advances, and 2511s. Um, I'm making this video to give some tips on 2511 specific stuff because when I went and got mine a couple weeks ago, I did what I usually do, which is go right to YouTube and watch a couple muffler mod videos, a couple ignition advance videos, just to see what kind of things I might be looking at. For instance, uh, what the mufflers' inners look like and things of that nature, what things to look out for. Um, so I want to go through uh, like almost half a dozen things that I'd like to add or change to the norm that I'm seeing in the 2511 specific stuff. Let's start with timing advance. Um, it's up to you what kind of saw you're making. I can tell you I advanced my timing by four uh, degrees, um, it's a, uh, which is roughly, uh, it's low 20 thousandths. Um, you can remove that from your keyway on the flywheel or from the woodruff key, um, which is embedded in the shaft and can be pulled right out. Now, what I'm seeing is guys who are saying, take the ignition coil off and then use the engine block as a pry bar and get under that flywheel. Um, you, do, you never ever do that. There's two types of flywheels and there's two ways to take them off depending on which type of flywheel you have. There's threaded and unthreaded. This is unthreaded. Now, both types are gonna have a little retention nut and you're gonna take that off, lefty-loosey. The flywheel side, PTO side is normal. It's reverse threading only on the clutch side. Um, you take off your retention nut. This one is then gonna be just the flywheel sitting on the shaft. It should slide right off, but it won't. Um, that's where the accepted, the accepted procedure is you take a punch, you put it into the little dimple that's on the end of the shaft, which is there precisely for that reason. You take a hammer and you give it a whack. Now, people will try to hold the flywheel while doing that because they think they're prying it off, but that's not what's happening. It's the, actually the shock wave that's going through, that you're sending through the shaft. That breaks the seal, I guess you'd say, between the, uh, the flywheel and the shaft. And then you'll be able to lift the flywheel straight up. Now, if you try to put it back down, you'll notice that you have to rotate it so that the little hole in it, the little slot in it, which is called the keyway, fits on the uh, fits over the the woodruff key on the shaft, and that's where you're going to be doing your grinding. You can watch other videos to get into specifics, but getting the uh, getting the flywheel off is very 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 simple because it's unthreaded. If it's a threaded flywheel, you need a tool like this, and your the flywheel will literally have a uh, a female threading that this goes into, and then that little tip goes into the punch hole, and then this thing drives it out. Um, which you'll see on bigger pro saws. It's just not necessary on something as small as this. Um, all right, moving along. Um, I have the plug out right now, but I always have a little rubber plug. I always cut a little chunk of uh, like weather strip or something to jam in so that there's no uh, wide open hole for particles to get to my air filter. Um, but the limiter caps here. Um, I'm seeing guys remove the whole back end, remove the carburetor and fuel lines, and then remove the retention bezel so that they have access to the, the limiter caps to remove them. I've never heard of that or seen anything like that. With Echoes and pretty much any saw, you simply, you'll notice that the, the limiter caps, which are little rubber sleeves on each of the two uh, adjustment screws, they're gonna have little tabs on them. and for echoes when they're at their full uh they have a they allow a quarter uh revolution rotation when they're at their fully open counterclockwise position the tab will line up with a little slot in that bezel face there when you have it lined up which is the counterclockwise most position which is how they usually come um you theoretically we just slide it out whereas in practice you're usually sitting there with a dental pick and a lighter <laughs> and working it out you know half a dozen pieces at a time but that's a lot faster than taking off the carb um you are gonna have to uh, adjust the carburetor a lot um when you start modding these now air filters um i was worried when people were saying that fines were getting past them on mine um it, it most certainly did not. I was in a tree doing a lot of dead, uh, cutting a lot of dead wood yesterday, a ton of dust. Um, I was surprised at how, I mean, I just cleaned my filter with my finger before filming this. Didn't even get a brush. 
Um, there was some fines um, around the mating flanges edges, but none, nothing got passed. I think that um, if people are having issues with fines getting passed, it's just not mating up properly. You just, you got to be sure that the surfaces on the back of the air filter and on the, uh, the carbs flange, you got to be sure that they are bone uh, uh, pure, like uh, clean and dry. Like it, they've got to mate up perfect. If you're worried about it, you can put a, uh, a light little smear of some heavy grease, like marine grease or something. Um, and that'll, that'll really ensure a tight seal. Now, another annoyance on, on this saw, uh, or I'm sorry, an annoyance on this saw, uh, um, another thing that points to quick craftsmanship, which I've found on a couple areas, unfortunately, I hate to say, um, but the spark plug door, just like the uh, air filter door, they both are these smart little snap-ins and they come down and if you want to take it off, you just slide it sideways and it's on these little hinges. Um, and that's good. That's all well and good. The problem is that when you open and close this, the top of this door, the top inside of this door nails against the top corner of your spark plug. So every time you open and close it, you're going, you're, you're like roughing that thing up. Um, it only takes 10 seconds with a grinder to give it the clearance necessary and then put it back on and voila, problem solved. Um, Really feel like they should have caught that. Never allowed it out otherwise. I was disappointed they didn't continue the palm uh, rests that they had on the 355s. Those are incredible. They give you so much more precision, especially if you one hand, and let's be real, this saw is gonna be one handed a lot. It's 5.02 pounds for crying out loud. Um, I put larger dogs on mine. You don't need dogs on a small saw, but when you're one-handing with it, they do offer a lot more control, and so do palm rests. Um, anyways, though, I'm, what I wanted to show is the muffler. Now, most common muffler mod is simply opening up the, uh, the muffler's exit portage, and that is, in the case of the 2511, that's actually quite significant. We're talking about 15% gains in horsepower. However, there's still two more choke points right here at the muffler that you could deal with and get even more flow and make this thing that much better. Um, all right, so your, your, your cylinder's exhaust uh, port uh, exit, which is the exhaust flange, um, is right behind here. It's dead center between the two screws right here. Those are the two screws that mount the, uh, the muffler's entryway up to the cylinder. Um, the gas leaves the cylinder through this really choked up, sharp 90 degree angle. It goes into the back half, and then there's three holes. One, two, three. In this uh, baffle wall that separates the rear from the front. The gas travels through uh, those holes into the front half and then out that hole. So I'm seeing a lot of guys simply uh, boring this hole a lot larger and then going right through the baffle wall that's behind it. That means that every time in a, there's an exhaust pulse, which is hundreds of times per second, um, it's spattering it right out the hole. Um, there's a moment when that piston is coming off of bottom dead center where the pressure in the muffler is higher than in the cylinder, and, it, and the cylinder actually sucks back charge, well, a combination of charge and spent charge, um, back up into the cylinder. You're mixing atmosphere into that if you have a big port exhaust, uh, muffler exit port right by your exhaust flange. Um, so I advise simply making your new exit hole right here because that gives you access to the three holes in the baffle, the one, two, one, two, three. You might even be able to see, man, without a flashlight, that's gonna be tough. Um, but I enlarged one of them to about 175% of its original size, which adds, um, enough throughput that there's no flow restriction exiting the muffler or between the two halves. And I haven't sacrificed the scavenge, the loop scavenging effect of having the, uh, the rear half to the muffler. That's important for two stroke function. Um, this is a non cap muffler to be clear. Um, now then there's one more part. That's the, uh, the intake to the muffler. 
the, the, the gasket, the heat shield, and the exhaust flange itself. Those all have a lot of room for throughput and for smoothness. Um, you just gotta be careful. The muffler is gonna be your limiting element, not the exhaust flange. The exhaust flange would allow a much wider opening than the muffler intake would allow. So you do the muffler first, obviously have your heat shield and uh, muffler gasket on it so that those get port matched and then use those as your template to do your, uh, your, your cylinder's exhaust uh, port flange, exit flange. Um, and don't touch an exit flange if you don't know that's on a mounted cylinder, if you are not confident in a 100.0% cleanup. Same applies to touching your muffler, although it's more serious, of course, at the, the port edge. Um, one thing I will say, um, uh, do not, uh, be gentle and it, you gotta reuse that little uh, muffler. It comes with one of these types where it's like a soft, flexible dealy with a, a coating over a perforated metal. Um, if it's not mounted up tight, your exhaust gases will fry the coating right off of it. That's obviously from a different saw. Um, at any rate, um, because the muffler's third mounting screw is on a little peg coming off of the block, if you omit the, uh, if you use just the heat shield and you omit that gasket, it's not gonna sit evenly anymore. If you do that, go turn it on, wait 30 seconds, turn it off, take the muffler off, you're gonna see that that uh, gasket, uh, or, uh, not gasket, because you didn't have one, you're gonna see that that heat shield has oil spray all over it because it's not, it's not sealing. And again, the sealing a tight seal, no atmosphere between the inner, the, 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 the exhaust flange and the part of innards of the muff that are a muffler body that are closest to that flange. That's important. Um, so anyways, I think I've yammered on this enough, but those are some points to make your uh, modifications on 2511s a little bit more successful, easier, better for the saw, et cetera. Um, when it comes to uh, exhaust sizing, to be clear, like I said, I made one of the three holes about 75% larger, so almost double the size of one of the holes. So if I had doubled it, I would have added one hole to three, would have been a 33%. It, that's fine. I was really looking at the size of my, uh, my exhaust flange slash muffler entry and my final uh, portage over here. My final portage over here is on the order of 70, 80% of the, uh, or uh, 65 to 80% of the, uh, the flange area, which is what you're supposed to aim for. When in doubt, err to the smaller side. Um, not only can you make it larger later if you choose, but more often than not, um, it's easy to go too far. And when you go too far, not only do you not, it's not like your power stays the same, you start losing power, but it gets louder and costs you more fuel at the same time. So you're weaker, but louder and more, uh, more fuel. So. Yeah, go, go gentle with the mufflers. You can see how well this saw runs with that tiny little OEM slit muffler. So, you know, it, you're gonna be going through a lot more gas. But it was surprised, it surprised me that I can get like 25 minutes uh, or something idling out of this after the ignition advance of four degrees and after serious muffler and exhaust flange opening. But I guess that's a testament to this little saw. This thing's, uh, this thing's coveted by pretty much all climbers for a reason. Anyways, once I once I mess with this for a bit longer and uh, done my stage two on it, um, I'll I'll be back with some more. Thanks for watching. Hope this could help someone out.